In this video, we're going to be looking at some GCSE questions on error intervals. We're going to be looking at a total of three questions, um, which will total 12 marks. So I think we have a three marker, a four marker, and a five marker. The first question is a four mark question, which is going to involve adding and multiplying error intervals. So, let's have a quick read. So a rectangle has a length of 21 to the nearest centimeter. All right, so the length is 21. So if that's to the nearest centimeter, then the upper and lower bound is what we need to work out. So the way that we do this is we'll write 21. We write the value above it if we're measuring to the nearest centimetre, which is 22. The value below it is 20. So halfway between 20 and 21 is 20.5. Put a less than or equal to there. Halfway between 21 and 22 is 21.5. Put less than there. So that's your, upper, that's your lower bound for the length. That's your upper bound for the length. Now for the width. leave a bit more space. So our width is 5.3. Now this is measured to the nearest millimeter. So 5.3 centimeters to the nearest millimeter. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. So the value above 5.3 centimeters to the nearest millimeter would be 5.4. And the value below would be 5.2. Less than or equal to, sorry. So now we find halfway between 5.2 and 5.3, which is 5.25, and halfway between these two, 5.35. So now we have our lower bound for width and our upper bound for width. So now we can answer the question. So work out the upper bound for the perimeter. So the perimeter of a rectangle consists of two lots of the length, plus two lots of the width. Okay, so the perimeter is equal to two lots of the length plus two lots of the width. Now if we want the upper bound for the perimeter, I'm just going to put perimeter upper bound, that's going to be, now we need to decide do we use the upper bound for length or the lower bound for length. Now if we are adding and multiplying here, we're going to be using the upper bound because we want, it, we want the perimeter to be the maximum possible. So we're going to use the upper bound, so I'm just going to put length upper bound, we're going to multiply that by 2, plus the width and the upper bound of that, I'm going to multiply that by 2. So what is the upper bound for the length? That's 21.5. We're going to multiply that by 2. And then the width, the upper bound for that is 5.35. We're going to times that by 2. So if we work these out, 21.5 times 2 is 43 centimetres. And 5.35 times by 2 is 10.7 centimetres. So when we add them together, our perimeter is 53.7 centimetres. So that's question 1A. Question 1b is to find the lower bound for the area. So we're looking at the area, but we want the lower bound. So I'm just going to put a little L there. So the area is length times width. Now if I want the... Um, what am I after? I'm after the lower bound. So if I want the lower bound for the area, I want to multiply two values of the length. Now, which two values of length, so which value of length and which value of width would multiply together to give the smallest possible answer? Is it 20.5 times 5.25? Is it 20.5 times 5.35? Is it 21.5 times 5.25 or 21.5 times 5.35? And hopefully you realize that to get the smallest possible answer, I'm going to have to use the two lower bounds. So I'm going to do the 20.5 times okay so uh, 20.5 times 5.25 and that 
gives us 107.625. It doesn't give an it doesn't ask you for a particular accuracy. So 107.625, and that would be centimeters squared. And that's how you do the first question of four marks. Okay, so two marks for each part there. Now this thing that we did at the beginning, we generally do this for every single question that we do. So let's have a look at our next one. So in this one, we are going to work out the upper bound for V. So we are, we've been given the values of S and T. S is to two decimal places and T is to three. So the first thing you need to do is do the upper and lower bounds for S and T. So S. We know it's 4.15 measured to two decimal places, so the value above would be 4.16, the value below 4.14. Halfway between these two is 4.145, which is your lower bound, and then your upper bound halfway between these is 4.155. Now T. Bit of space. So T is 2.516. So this is measured to three decimal places. So the value above this is 2.517. The value below this is 2.515. Halfway between these two is 2.5155. And the value of, in between these two is 2.5165. Now the question is to find the upper bound for V. The V and the upper bound. So V is equal to S divided by T. Now what we need to realize here is in order to get the upper bound for V, so I want this to be the biggest possible number, do I use the upper bound or the lower bound for S? And do I use the upper bound or the lower bound for T? Now, if you can't remember this, the best way for you to do it is to do all four combinations. All right, so these are the MS values, these are the T values. So to get V, we would do that divided by that, that divided by that, that divided by that, or that divided by that. And the one that gives you the largest number, because we're working out the upper bound, is the upper bound. Right, so if you can't remember the way to do it, that's how you do it. But if you can remember, um, then it's going to save you a bit of time. So let's think about this. I want the upper bound for V. So the value of S, I'm going to get a value for S, and then I'm going to divide it by T. Now, would I like to start off with the lowest possible value of S or the biggest possible value of S if I'm going to then divide by some, divide this by a number? All right, and you'd, hopefully you're thinking, I'll, I'd like to start with the um, higher value because when, um, if I'm going to divide by something I'd like to start off with a higher value so when I divide by something it will still give me a big answer so I'm going to look for the upper bound for S now I'm going to do that number and then I'm going to divide it by T now should I divide it by the upper bound or the lower bound now remember I want the answer to this to be as big as possible because I want the upper bound so to get a bigger answer, you'd rather divide by a smaller number. So for T, we're actually going to divide by the lower bound. Okay, this is the bit that people find tricky. All right, so the upper bound of S is 4.155. And the lower bound for T is this number, 2.515. Alright, so we're just going to get our calculator up and type this in. So, let's go into fraction mode. 4.155 divided by 2.5155. And give your answer to three decimal places, so 1.652. Alright, to three decimal places. Now. If you're not going to remember that, 
And what I suggest you do is you do all four combinations. So this number divided by this, this number divided by this, this number divided by this, this number divided by this. Note which one is giving you the biggest possible ans biggest final answer, and then write down that working out as you uh, as you're working out. So do all four combinations, and then write that out. Okay, and that will get you the three marks for this question. So now let's look at our final question. It's a five mark question which requires some multiplying. So v squared equals u squared plus 2as, and you've got values of v, a, and s, and you want to work out the upper bound for u. Now, the first thing you need to realize is it's not given in the form of u equals. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to rearrange the formula to make u the subject, or even u squared the subject. So let's make u squared the subject, so I'm going to move this 2as to the left. So that will give us u squared is equal to v squared minus 2as. Okay, now I want to work out the upper bound for u. Okay, so I'm just going to put u squared, but I'm just going to put u here, so I'm after the upper bound. So, for v, am I after the upper bound or the lower bound? All right, actually, let's work out all of these. So the bounds for v, a, and s. Okay, so v is 35.2 to one decimal place. So the value above is 35.3 and below 35.1. Halfway between these two is 35.15. And halfway between these two is 35.25. That's your lower bound, that's your upper bound. All right, let's do the same with the a. So we've got 9.8. So this is measured to one decimal place. The value above that is 9.9 .9, and below is 9.7. Halfway between these two is 9.75. It's always a less than or equal to on the left side and a less than on the right. And halfway between these two is 9.85. And s finally, so our s value is 60.35. This one is measured to two decimal places. So the value above this is 60.36 and 60.34. So halfway between these two is 60.345. Halfway between these two is 60.355. All right. So I want the upper bound for u, all right? Well, the upper bound for u is squared, and then I will square root it. So for v, should I start with the upper bound or the lower bound? All right, well, if I want the answer to be the biggest possible, I need the value of v squared to be as big as possible. So I'm going to say maximum. And then if I want v squared take away something, to be the biggest possible answer, I'd like the value of this to be a minimum. Yeah? So if I make this a maximum and this a minimum, overall when I subtract them, I'm going to get a bigger answer. So in order to get the maximum v squared, I'm going to have to use the upper bound for v. So I'll just put v squared, but I'll put u there, so the upper bound. And then we're going to minus 2, and we want this to be a minimum. So multiply that by a, but we want it to be a minimum, so we're going to go with the lower bound for A, multiplied it by S, and again we want it to be the minimum, so the lower bound for S. So let's do the calculations, that will be v, the upper bound of V, which is 35.25 squared minus, and I'll just do a bracket, 2 times the lower bound for A, which is 9.75, times the lower bound for S, which is 60.345. Okay, so we're going to type this into our calculator. 35.25 squared minus... 2 times 9.75 times 60.345. Okay, and 
what's the upper bound for u squared? So that was 65.835. So that's the upper bound of u squared. So, so I want to just work out the upper bound of u. So I'm going to do the square root of this answer. So square root answer, which is 8.113877. And we want it to three significant figures. That would be 8.11. The number after that is not 5 or more, so 8.11 will be the answer. Okay, and that'll be a five mark question there. Okay.